In today's video, I'm giving you five varied drills that you can try out this weekend on your snowboard. They're very different, but I've put them together because each of these drills challenges a different fundamental movement that is crucial to good snowboarding. And it's my belief that if you can perform all of these drills, then without a shadow of a doubt, you will be a good snowboarder. The first drill is falling leaf with an edge hop at the end. What does that mean? What are we actually doing? Well, the falling leaf is an exercise where you start on one edge, get the board to turn and point straight down the slope, yet you don't change an edge, that's crucial, and then you bring the board back to a stop and we've added in the edge hop at the end. So why have I picked this exercise? Well, I'm a big fan of the folding leaf. It looks simple, but a lot of competent riders really struggle with this drill. Hopefully it should have been something you did when you first learned to snowboard, because this is a fundamental movement of how we get the board to point down the slope and how you pull yourself into every turn. However, a lot of people didn't do that. They skipped this one or they simply forgot it and developed bad habits where they use the back foot to kick the board round and kind of rudder foot it out or windscreen wiper it round each turn. So how do we do it? Well it's all about getting your front foot to flatten. By flattening the front foot you torsionally twist the board, that is you kind of bend it a bit like a ribbon through the middle which releases pressure at the front of the board whilst keeping it at the back which is what twists and turns the board to point down the slope. Then to bring it back to a stop you simply reverse the movements you just made so you bring the board back onto its edge and then we're adding in that hop to really test your balance. To get the hop, to get this small jump done properly, you really need to have equal pressure through both feet and you need to be centered on your board. So I've talked about flattening the foot, but what are the movements we make above the board to actually get that front foot to flatten? Well, it's all about bringing your front knee and front hip over the top of the foot, kind of pushing them out to the bottom corner of your board to get your weight stacked over the front foot. So on your heel edge, that kind of looks like pushing that front knee and pushing that front hip forward, again, over that front ankle and then holding it there and then pulling it back to slow yourself down. On the toe edge, it's gonna look more like kind of pulling that front knee and pulling that front hip back over that front foot, again, to get that front foot to flatten and then simply leaning back into that knee, into that hip, up the slope, bring the board back to a stop. Now it's crucial that you keep your back knee and your back hip, so your back leg, locked in place because if you also follow through with the back knee and hip, that's when you're going to change an edge. And this drill really just wants to work on the movements from the front leg and isolate those movements and make sure you can use both legs independently. So if you find yourself changing edge, really focus on just working on that front leg, on that front foot getting flat and not kicking round the back one. So, looks simple, but more difficult than you'll give it credit for. Give this one a go. You do it in both your regular and your switch stances, as I mentioned, and also on the toes and the heels. It's really gonna help with short turns, which is what you're gonna want to do when you're riding steep slopes. It helps you when you're in tight situations, like riding through the trees and even on moguls as well. But it's not just for making short skiddy turns, because if you bring these movements into your carving, then you can really quickly whip the board from edge to edge. Speaking of carving, let's move on to drill number two. Slow speed carving. This drill is excellent and it really works on getting your edge change done properly. And all an edge change really is, is crossing your center of mass over the board from one edge to the other. And by riding slow, you're not able to just kind of throw your weight across the board, but you have to get these movements done precise and that requires you to have good posture. So in order to do this, all I'm doing is passing my hips back and forward over the middle of the board. When I'm on my toe edge, my hips are stacked vertically over my effective edge to get the board to grip in the snow. And when I'm on the heel edge, my hips are stacked over the heels to send my weight down through the heel edge to get the board to grip in the snow there. And what a calf turn is, is a turn without any skid. If you look at your track behind you, it should be pencil thin in the snow. And it's by getting your weight in the right place that you get the board on its edge and it's the side cut of the board, the curve in the edge of the board that then pulls you through the turn. 
So you get your posture correct, and then you just need to add in a very small lateral movement. A lateral movement just means that you're leaning your center of mass, leaning your body onto the inside of the turn. And in the same way when you ride a bike, when you're going fast, you can just lean over into the turn. That's what we're doing when we're carving. But because we're riding slow, you just have to be precise with that movement. It's barely there at all, but you still need to lean just slightly onto the inside of the turn. As you feel yourself picking up speed, you feel like you need to increase this movement and then actually it will become a little bit easier. But by just going really slowly, you really have to work on having your posture exactly correct and you really feel the timing of this movement, passing your hips back and forward over the board at the edge change. And indeed it is bypassing your hips back and forward over the board that you make the board change an edge. That is the fundamental movement that makes the board roll from one edge to another. Now, if you can do this, you're really gonna improve your edge changes because in every turn, even on a really fast turn or a tight turn on a steep slope or a turn in powder, you always need to pass your center of mass over the board. So by doing it in this slow speed carving, you really work on the timing and the coordination of these movements. And also if you're someone that struggles on flat slopes, well, this is the best drill for just learning to rock the board from one edge to another. Now let's look at drill number three. This is a brilliant drill that allows you to mirror a regular turn at one side of the piece with a switch turn at the other. And you do this by adding in a 180 revert through the middle across the slope, connecting those two turns together. Now, this is essentially two drills, one where you start on the heel side and one where you start on the toe side. When you start on the heel side, you'll make a front side 180 across the middle of the slope. You'll then practice your toe to heel side turn before front side 180 reverting back across the slope in the other direction and then doing another toe to heel side turn. And as I said, because you do one in your regular stance, you can really just think, okay, what were the movements I just made there to get the board to turn? And then you can copy those movements in your switch stance at the other side of the slope. When you do this on the toe side, you go across the slope on your toes, push the board round in a backside 180 revert. Your backside literally turns in the direction that you are traveling. And then you get to practice your heel to toe side turn, another backside 180 through the middle, and then heel to toe side turn again at the other side of the piece in your opposite stance. So I'm not gonna to explain too much how we do the turn. Hopefully you can already turn. And as I said, with this drill, you just think about what movements you made in your regular stance and copy them in your switch stance. But the thing that might be new here is that revert. And the key thing to think about here is making sure that through that 180, you keep the board on the edge you started on until that rotation has been completed. So for the front side 180, off the heels, keep the board pushing round on the heels. Once the 180 is completed, then you can change edge, pass your hips over the board and land on the toe side. And when you're doing the back side 180, make sure you push the board round on the balls of your feet, that you stay on the toe side for the whole 180 before rocking onto the heels at the end of the rotation. If you go too soon, say at 90 degrees, you try and change edge, that's when you're gonna catch an edge. So watch out for that. And the movements that allow you to make this revert is by opening up your shoulders ahead of the board. You can see me, I kind of take my front arm up the slope on the back side 180 or up the slope also on the front side 180 just to open up my upper body and create that rotation to push the board around. And when you wanna start getting into freestyle, this is where you really start to look at upper and lower body separation. If you wanna do some basic spins, nose rolls, butters, things like that, it's great to start learning upper and lower body separation right now in this drill. And of course the upshot of it is, if you can perform this drill on both edges, then you'll have done both your heel to toe and your toe to heel side turn in switch. Therefore, you can start riding switch as well. Drill number four is hourglass turns. So imagine that hourglass shape and you're gonna try and keep your turns within that imaginary corridor. That's gonna mean big turns at the top of the hourglass that gradually get smaller and smaller and smaller as you work your way down to that pinch point at the middle. And then you're just gonna start opening those turns back up. So this is a great drill for working on your timing and coordination. It's gonna work best on a kind of cruisy green or blue slope because you don't wanna be picking up too much speed on those big turns at the top and at the bottom of the hourglass. Your technique is gonna change slightly as you make these different turns. So it's really gonna teach you what movements do what on the snowboard. 
So at the top, we're going to be making the same kind of movements that we were in the slow speed carving exercise. It's more just about passing your hips, passing your center of mass, kind of as one unit over the board, sitting your weight on the edge, getting the board to do all the work. But then as you want to start making those turns smaller, at the same time as passing your hips, over the middle of the board, you're gonna kind of do that with a bit of bias to leading in with the front hip first and opening up your front knee and front hip into the turn as we did with drill number one, the falling leaf. At the middle part with those tightest turns, that's when you're really turning the board using your knees and your hips independently, one, two, one, two, back and forward over the board to get your feet to kind of pedal back and forth like this. And then once you're through that middle point, you just kind of dial back those movements a little bit and then you get into that more lazy kind of set it and forget it style riding where you're just sitting your weight in the right place. So super fun exercise when you've got that nice wide mellow piece. Imagine in your head that hourglass shape and see if you can keep your turns within that imaginary corridor. Now onto our fifth and final drill and this one is a little bit more tricky. This is dolphin turns. What this is, is that at the end of every turn, you pop an ollie, then you land into your new turn on your new edge or at the nose of your board. Then throughout the turn, you gradually shift your weight towards the back end of the board to load it up for an ollie, pop that ollie at the edge change, land on your new edge, on the nose of the board, into your turn. And yes, this one is a little bit more tricky, but it really kind of exaggerates loads of the movements that are already there in your normal snowboarding turns. So the ollie at the end of the turn, that's an exaggeration of the off pressure, that is pressure through your back foot that you can use to give you grip and drive the board through the end of the turn. The edge change itself kind of happens in the air, so you're gonna to have to be a bit more confident with your lateral movement. That is the crossing of your hips and your center of mass over the board and then we're gonna land on the nose of the board, which is an exaggeration of the fore pressure, the weight you can put to the front of the board to engage that top part of your side cut to really start pulling you into the turn. Then as the board passes through the turn, you gradually shift your weight from fore to aft or from nose to tail, getting your weight along the side cut where you want it during the turn. And then once again, you pop that ollie off the back foot. So it really is an exaggeration. And you know, you're not gonna normally want to ride doing these ollies in between every turn. But if you can do this, it really will improve your overall timing and coordination. And it's just more of a fun drill to really challenge yourself with. Personally, I feel like these turns work best with shorter, tighter turns, because it is in shorter, tighter turns that we use more of this shift fore to aft throughout the turn to really quickly drive the board through the turn. However, that's not saying you can't do larger, more sort of calf style turns, and then quickly pop an ollie at the end and land on the nose of the board. So give these drills a go. I would say the Dolphins is definitely the most difficult, but depending on what kind of habits you have or what you've practiced previously, that might not be the case for you. So let me know how you get on with them. Did you like this video? Should I make more kind of drills based videos like this? Did I waffle on too long and over explain some of them? Perhaps, I kind of thought this would be a slightly shorter video, but that's what I do, I over explain stuff. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. As always, really helps when you stick around to the end, if you do that like and subscribe thing also, I don't say that enough, but that also helps me out too. But yeah, just big up. Thank you for making it this far through the video and I'll see you in the next one.